else I hear. So I stopped in at Stone Coat Countertops in Grants Pass, Oregon, and looked at all their awesome resin and stuff that they have. So uh, I got all excited, um, husband got all excited, and we got ourselves some resin. So I talked to them and they also said that I could be an affiliate for them. So I am putting some links down in the description. Uh, the code is size corner and you get some percentages off when you go buy some stuff with the code. So I thought that was very cool of them. So I want to make some bookends and I thought it would be really cool to do a guitar on one end and the top of the guitar on the other end. And I had seen a picture of a guitar on Pinterest or somewhere that someone had made. So I'm gonna do similar with spalted maple and all that stuff. So I'm just gonna get started. Well, I am going to take some carbon paper and I'm just gonna trace this guitar onto this piece. I think I want it to be on this side because there's a little bit more spalting over here. Yeah, it can be right on the edge. So I traced that guitar shape using the carbon paper rather than using blue tape and gluing the pattern to the wood, just so I wouldn't have to mess with the glue on the wood. Right, that looks great. Yeah. And the other side, I'm not gonna do this vaulted maple because I don't think that uh, guitars always have the same on the body and on the neck part. So I'm gonna do this right here with cherry. Okay. Wonderful. Let's cut those out. This vaulted maple is very easy to cut because it's rotten wood which is really weird, but this is what I found when I googled what spalting is. Spalting is caused by certain white rot decay fungi growing in wood, primarily hardwoods such as maple, birch, and beech. The fungi create zone lines in the wood where territories of competing fungi meet. Funny how rotting wood just looks so cool. Then I drew in some lines where I wanted to router, and I routered them in, hoping to make them look like those natural fungi created zone lines. I then filled them up with resin. I added some sparkly brown pigment powder to the resin for these deep areas. And while that was setting up, I cut some pieces to assemble the bookends. I sanded them and put some wood glue on there and kept my fingers clean by smoothing the glue with a paper towel. I made an easy butt joint and put some brad nails in there. And I used a speed square to help. I put on a few clamps and when it was all set and dry, I removed the clamps and had the bodies for the bookends. Well. I'm a little bit scared to run this through the planer, but then I really, really want to run it through the planer because it'll be quick. So I'm going to try it. The planer worked really well, but I used the orbital sander to go back over those stubborn areas. And I did a little hand sanding too. Here is the guitar so far. And so um, I really should put a clear coat of resin over the back first, but I wanna see how this looks so badly that I'm gonna do this side first. <sighs> yeah, I am. I mixed a small amount of resin because I only needed enough to make one thin layer. And I knew the darker resin filled fungi lines would pop back into their dark brown sparkly awesomeness once the new resin covered them. 
And it really did. I smoothed the resin all around the top and the sides and then used a torch to pop all the surface bubbles. Then I added some screws to the bookends to help build brad nails and grease. Then after the resin cured, I had wished I had used a different color than the brown, so I routed some more fungi lines on the back, and I poured a sparkly orange tinted resin into them, sanded that, and poured another thin layer of clear resin over the top of that, and left that to set up. So, this side looks great! This side did look great until I poured this side. And then, because it was sitting like this, it pooled down, and I was wiping it, so it wouldn't pool, but of course it pooled. And now I have to sand off that pooling, which will probably make it look ugly, um, but we'll see. So let's sand that once. <laughs> I'm gonna wipe this off with this white wet rag. Just bringing it back to life, which is nice. But it's not as nice as this side. But so it has like a matte finish, which I kind of like it. Well, I changed my mind about this guitar. So this is really pretty on this side. And this side, you know, I, I did sand it and it's way smooth now. It doesn't have the, oh, what did I call them? Where it pooled. So I just tried transferring on it. I, I, I thought maybe it was thin enough. Uh, I don't know what I thought, but anyway, it, it works kind of. <laughs> so I am going to transfer a verse on there and I'm going to make this into a music stand instead. Because the, uh, these are just big for bookends. So a music stand, ah! Hopefully I can do that. So I'm gonna try to do anywho. But for now, I'm going to put this on here and hopefully it would work out. I put Isaiah 3820, which says, The Lord saved me, so we will play songs on stringed instruments in the temple of the Lord all the days of our lives. It worked ish! So there were a couple spots where the, the uh, paper did stick, which I don't like. See if I can get it off. Oh yeah, it's coming right off. Cool. Okay, well. Let's see if you can see that on here. Isn't that cool? Huh. So, my question is, I was going to try these little uh, micro mesh pads that I learned about from Peter Brown and try to polish this up, but it'll, it'll sand that away, I'm sure. Um, but I wouldn't mind trying it in a different area. And it's gonna be the back of this now. Well, it was gonna be the back of it before, but um, it really doesn't need to be that shiny. But let's just see what we can do with those micro mesh pads real quick. You're supposed to wet sand it. Does it say? Oh. Can be used wet or dry. Ooh, look at that. It can be unloaded by wrapping against the palm of your hand. Peter Brown uses these with amazing results, so I know it can be done. 
but not today for me. Ah, I just don't want to do that. Okay. What if I spray it with clear semi-gloss? I'm going to try that. I think it might work. Yep, look at that. Okay. I'm going to call that good. Yeah, I am. Maybe it won't look like that once it dries, but I think that looks pretty good. So I've got this, I don't know what it's called, stand, I guess, that I had to hold up like little things. And I'm going to cut it apart and see if I can use it on my guitar. Use my Dremel. Ah! Turn it around. And I'm just gonna put all of them up like this. Let's see if I can do them all at once. Okay. I think that's good. There and there. All right. Now let's smooth all that up. try to sand an edge on this so that it can be attached easier but first I'm gonna take this thing and see how it does on the sandpaper this is called an eraser stick and it is supposed to clean the sandpaper and boy does it work well I got it all cleaned up and then made a flat spot on the metal piece I'm going to use as the paper shelf for the music stand. I think that might work. Hot, but flat. Alrighty, there's my piece. Ah, there it is. And it's gonna go on here like that. And let's just double check that. It's going to sit, it's gonna sit like that. So about right there. We'll straighten it up a little bit. Straighten it up. And then I'm just gonna put epoxy down where it touches. And hopefully that epoxy glue will work well with the resin epoxy on the guitar. Okay. You wanna come up, Wally? Okay, come on, friend. Oh. Gibbs is in the house and it's snowing. Wally came up with me. I was kind of surprised that you came up with me. Great. Ooh, yeah, that's stinky, huh? Stinky. Yeah. Pew. Pew. Stinks. Underneath here. Hoping this epoxy works on this. I don't see why it shouldn't work. Right. Dried ugly. Ah. Yucky. I wonder if I can fix that somehow. So what I'm gonna do now, I'll get back to that in a little bit. I mixed up a different epoxy. I wished I had used this epoxy on the back because it's clear. I thought the other stuff was clear or going to dry clear but apparently it doesn't so this is just going to go on here and it almost looks like a little mustache which i i usually like mustaches but i really don't care for that look 
but this is what I want. So I'm going to put it on here anyway. Anyway. There, that works. That works. Well, ooh. Yay, look at that. Yay! Nice. That's ugly, but oh well. Yay! Well, it's done. And I like it a lot. So it went from being a bookend to a music stand. And it's a tabletop music stand, and I thought I'd try it out. But what I learned is don't use epoxy that doesn't that isn't clear. This epoxy is cream, and if you're gonna see the epoxy, bleh, this epoxy was clear and it looks great. So I'm gonna try to fix that by maybe putting some coloring in the epoxy, I, I don't know. But I'd like to try it out. And you know what, at first I didn't like that it rocked, but it's a guitar and it's rocking. Yeah, I love it. I don't play guitar, so I'm not gonna put guitar music there, but I will put a piece of intarsia there. <gasps> Look at that. Ah! I love it! Oh, and I gotta say, so the, the, the wood is spalted maple, and the resin is stone coat countertops resin. So they gave me a code. Um, Click on the link below and the code is size corner and you can get a percentage off if you order from them. So, anywho, I like it. Yeah. So we'll see you next time. Bye!